Hello, welcome to Community Contact with Cher Cunningham. Today we're sitting at Chigamook Community Health Center during the week of a, a Health and Wellness Week with our Executive Director, David Jeffrey. What is the week exactly and what is the Health Center exactly? Position us for what's going on this evening. So the Health Center is really called Le Centre de Santé Communautaire Chigamook, Community Health Center. We're one of 75 community health centers in the province. What's particularly unique for Chigamick is that we're the only Francophone, Aboriginal, and Anglophone center in the province. You're either English or French or Aboriginal as a center, not all three. So it poses particularly interesting challenges for us. And in this week, we're celebrating Community Health and Wellbeing Week, which is an annualized event across the province among all of our CHC brethren. Uh, every center does something through the week to celebrate um, and, and showcase how we work with our community to help people get a better sense of belonging, uh, health, and their sense of well-being generally in the community. So while some people might think of this as almost just a walk-in clinic or a mental health service, there's a lot more to that. Actually, when I speak to clients, I'm hearing holistic, caring, respectful. I'm hearing a lot more attention to the human being than the condition and the sense of belonging. How important is that when, when someone comes in here as a, a patient? Well, the sense of belonging is actually key and we're keying some of our thinking on this from the Canadian Index of Wellbeing, which does a national survey on health and well-being across a bunch of socially determined indicators. And uh, we really try to meet the person where they are rather than simply see them in their condition. And the condition is not that I'm demeaning it, but it's secondary to who they really are as an individual. So we take the individual first, figure out what's going on in their life, and then start a conversation from that vantage point to understand why they're here, what brings them here, and then begin to unravel their story around their health or their lack thereof. Now, how long has Chigamit been around? So we uh, actually opened our doors about five years ago. It'll be February, five years in February. But our board of directors has been living with this dream since about 06. In fact, even earlier, the Francophone community had this dream for probably 15 years now to have a community health center for Francophones. The concept of a community health center actually goes back to the 60s or 70s, doesn't it? It's not a brand new concept. No. And it isn't just about that individual care. It's more about community. But in your case, it's three communities. Yes, it is. In our <laughs> case, it's three communities. How does that complicate what you can expect from week to week? Well, it's uh, because we are, in a way, still starting. The complication is being able to, if I could say it this way, hold the dominant culture in abeyance to allow space for the Francophone and Aboriginal cultures to flourish. And it's very tricky because the dominant culture just tends to roll over everything in its path. And so to hold that space is uh, extremely challenging because we have people here who are beginning to see us as their place, the place they want to come to, where they can reach and achieve a level of well-being that maybe is not reachable in other locations. Not that I'm being critical of other healthcare providers, but we take a different approach here. We really try to think of this place and build this place as, as their, their, the, the village, in a way, that takes care of from multiple vantage points, from how you manage and work with your food, what's it like in your housing situation, um, do you need um, something like uh, a meditative practice or a physical activity practice that suits your real physical or mental condition so it's actually realizable for you right. uh, in addition to your primary care needs. So, so we try to... the absence of disease that you're after. No. <laughs> you're really defining wellness as yeah. somebody really reaching their potential, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. That's, I'm not going to tear up on you or anything, but that's <laughs> really yeah. a, a step beyond what time is available for most other healthcare practitioners. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you see a psychiatrist, you have one meeting. When you see a doctor, you may have two or three meetings a year. Yeah. When you see a counselor, it's mm -hmm. for a specific length of time. What yeah. kind of relationship do you build with the people in the community? Well, we build a long-term, uh, cradle-to-grave kind of relationship. Uh, that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming for the, uh, the individual to feel like this is the place they can come to for their multiplicity of health needs. I was speaking with an older woman in the 
soiree over the next room. She was saying she's unhappy where she is because she's got multiple conditions and she needs somewhere where she can go and have the time to really speak to each of those, unravel the, the complications between and come up with a plan to manage that complexity. Because we're on salary here and we're in a different funding model, even the doctors are on salary, uh, it lets us, ha all, all the practitioners, spend the time they need to spend to do that unraveling and then rebuild a journey that will work for the client. Now, when you look at that communities and you talk about the dominant community versus the other two, who is it that keeps things on track? Is it you that just makes all the decisions from this office over here? Or <laughs> how does that all pull together to balance things yeah. out? No, it's really a completely a team effort. You know, all of us who, it, it takes a special kind of person, I think, to work in a CHC in every discipline. They, they need to be willing to work with the most fragile in our community, the people who are most wounded, if I could say it that way. And it is those people that CHC serve, serve across the province. Um, so those individuals who are drawn to this kind of work are here because they're, they're willing to do the work of the heart, not just the body. And it isn't, if, if I would come in, I, mm -hmm. I don't identify as First Nations or Francophone, I'm right. just dominant culture. <laughs> so if I come in I am I, too. and I say, you know, I want to understand yeah. the range yeah. of services here, is that open to me? Yes, it is. The services available here at Chigamic are available to anybody in this community. Um, we have what we call um, priority populations. Uh, I can name some of those. You know, it's people who are the most fragile, so youth who are falling through the cracks, and seniors who are most fragile and maybe a bit shut in, and people with mental health and addiction issues. Um, but also those people who self-identify as uh, Francophone and or Aboriginal. That being said, we are a center for anybody who needs primary health care and the associated allied health professions that accompany that. Now, what brought you here? What is your background that made you say, you know what, Executive Director of Chigamic, that's beautiful. What was that moment? That well, I was uh, extremely attracted to this position when I knew that this was being built here in this community and actually tried to get into another one first. But I, my background is... Uh, I'm community, community work, basically. I spent seven years at United Way in Barrie. The United Way of Greater Simple County is what it became. And it, it's always been for me about having an impact on community that is a positive impact towards social justice and social change. So those most marginalized and those perhaps on the more fringe of society actually have access and have a chance to have a life that's richer and fuller than it is now. So what do you find, if it's possible to even define, what do you find some of the biggest needs in this community are that you're able to, to fulfill? You know, uh, half of our population that are rostered here live in poverty. Half. half. That's, that's a huge statistic. Yep. And we're running a particular project now for the Local Health Integration Network, the North Simcoe Muskoka Local Health Integration Network. It's called Health Links. And it's a strategy by the Minister of Health to really look at that part of the population that uses the healthcare system the most, again, the most fragile. Mm -hmm. Recent study told, tells us, uh, Laura Rossella did this study with a bunch of other colleagues in the American Journal of Health Promotion, that the 5% of Ontarians, this is an eight-year study of Ontarians who are the 5% the, the using the system the most, half of them live in poverty. Yeah. So the issue for healthcare generally is not a health, not a, a healthcare issue, it's a poverty issue. People don't know where to go living in poverty to get their variety of needs met. Do they even know that they have those needs? I mean, I remember being a single mother on mother's mm -hmm. allowance mm -hmm. way back in the day, mm -hmm. and it didn't occur to me to get health care for myself. I would get emergency health care for sure. my children. I would sure. do well baby visits, and sure. it never occurred to me that I could yeah. look at my own health. Yeah. So I, you know, I love that you're hitting on that because I think it's a... It's a, a frame of reference. Mm -hmm. It's a way of thinking about mm -hmm. yourself in, in, in the society we live in. And I think that CHCs work hard to try to reverse some of that dominant culture of thinking, to have people think about their well-being is, is connected to uh, a resource and others in the community. And that room next door is full of community members having a, a chance to bond and connect and meet and talk. And our crew out in town today giving away well-being kits we're having spontaneous conversations with people where people are telling their life story just because they needed to and wanted to. People need spaces that feel safe, that feel like their own, 
where they uh, feel cared for and where they can open up. And that's when I think, you know, t- connecting back to your story of your earlier tri- uh, life, um, where CHCs can make a difference mm-hmm. in the lives of people who are say, struggling the most, right. more challenged, not as many opportunities. A lot of angry looking faces out there to poverty stricken people as well. Like when you're approaching mm-hmm. somebody for support and help, you see a lot mm-hmm. of anger and resistance and judgment as well. Yeah. I remember when my little girl was about four, we, I got her into Sparks, which was a free mm-hmm. program, yeah. and it was at a church. Yeah. And to find one place where one person approached mm-hmm. me with caring mm-hmm. was so unique in my experience. Yeah. And when people come in yeah. here, I yeah. see you've got two receptionists, you've got an information mm-hmm. desk, you've got a wonderful waiting room behind us here mm-hmm. that just looks welcoming with yeah. lots of signage and information. So yeah. I don't even have to come in and ask a dumb question. I can come <laughs> in and read something sure. and then ask an intelligent yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. else can they find some information? I noticed you've got brochures. You were at, mm-hmm. When we were at the powwow, I noticed mm-hmm. amazing program brochures. Right. You've got a website. How yeah. can we get more information before coming in to see you? Well, you've named many of the strategies we're using. Uh, we're, we want it, we're wanting to develop a more comprehensive community engagement strategy. Uh, we're just about to hire a French language services clinical navigator role that will help us bridge more into the Francophone community. We're looking to try to create roles that let us uh, have a deeper connection to those minority cultures that tend to get uh, sidelined mm-hmm. and uh, try and draw them into uh, the center, because we're going to be in the center of town. Nice. This is our interim location. We're going to build a new building downtown. We've been approved for funding. And we really think, and our subtext and our title of our organization is The People's Place. We really think of that new space as The People's Place. I really want to build a sensibility in this community of people feeling like this really is their place. They can come and just hang out. They can come participate in this, that, or the other event. All of our events have no cost. Right. That's an important feature. It is. It's a, it's to a f- get somebody in that door, I would think that's that first reluctance, right? Get them right. to take that one step right. over the threshold and say, yeah, yeah, I belong here, I deserve this. Yeah. Our greatest challenge, I believe, is, the, is, is getting our message out. Even tonight in the soiree in the room next door, the same woman I was talking with says, came out to me at the beginning of our conversation and said, you know, I really don't know what you do. <laughs> I didn't know whether I could come here mm-hmm. because I'm not Aboriginal. And I said, absolutely, you could come here. So if you could say, at the end of this year, mm-hmm. we've accomplished this, what would be that biggest, most wonderful thing to accomplish, would you say? The soiree is a, a beginning, it's a great sure. place to get people to come in, in a low-risk way. Sure. Sure. But what would be something that you just say, what we really need here is, and you've got funding, so I'm not going to let you use that as an excuse. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, fun- we're, we're actually decently funded mm-hmm. to do really good work. That's. Fantastic. That's exciting. That's so exciting. You, you it's a, wow. Goals. Like that. You have how, goals how, beyond funding. It's <laughs> fantastic. So, you know, I think uh, the story that Jeff, our street art worker, told me today about how we, was, how we were, our crew was meeting people in town today. If we were able to have that quality of conversation more frequently and with many more people, especially in the minority cultures in our region, I'd be very happy. And if they started to come, to our new location, even here, when we're still here, if we're here for another couple of years, and our new location when we move, and start to feel like I could come here whenever I needed and wanted to. And I would, I would be, I know that when I walk in, I'm completely accepted for who and what I am. Wow. If we succeeded there, I'd be very happy. Is that your mission statement? Uh, I not quite. Read, but I haven't read it recently. <laughs> but it, there's a similarity to that. There's a, simila- there's a together, similarity. Building the health of yeah. the community and yeah. the community members, yeah. which is very unique. Yeah. And I know we're not going to cover everything, but we're going to make an attempt to get a really good understanding of all the services as well as we talk to some of your other staff. And I appreciate you taking your time today because getting that understanding of the mechanics behind it sure. and the, the meaning behind it is yeah. important so that people know yeah. that the programs we're about to talk about, yes. they can take part in too. Very good. So thank you very much. Well, thanks for the opportunity. And enjoy the rest of the soiree. It looks Absolutely. like a fantastic success. Yeah, yeah. thank you.
So here we are at the front door of Chigamick, and I'm here to see Julian. He's one of the mental health counselors here at Chigamick Health Center. And we're going to go in, and I'm just going to see what does it feel like to be one of his clients. And let's go in and see. Hello, Cher. Julian, How are you? I'm good Julian. To meet you. Yeah, I'm happy you could make it. Well, yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah, welcome to Sugar Beck. Uh, yeah, so please follow me to my office. All right, very good. How was the ride? Well, a nice short drive. It's nice to have you here as a local service. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, typically, you'd think of driving to Barry. Have a seat. Thank you. So, how are you today? I'm doing fairly well, yeah. but I'm sure you hear that all the time. Yeah, and some people are not doing that well also, <laughs> so there's all kinds of situation for everybody. So tell me, um, we're seated here, it's a nice cozy little office, it mm -hmm. seems nice and private as well. It, your windows are very small, and mm -hmm. how long do I get you for? Uh, usually our sessions are for about uh, 45 to 50 minutes. And so that so that that's a good amount of time. Sometimes we go a little over that, uh, but it's a good time to get to, to get into what's happening. And usually we just start talking about the weather or things like that. And, and then, uh, like we we need that that connection and right. that that trust and that that uh, human connection. And really, to me, that's the basis of uh, the counseling to have that good connection uh, with people. Uh, otherwise, uh, how can you open up and talk about things that are really painful in your life? Uh, you need to have that trust. The range of services really, what, what's going to happen? What can I expect if I've come in here and I've told you, you know, I've been clinically depressed for mm -hmm. years now, I've been on antidepressants, I still, you know, winter's coming yeah. and now I'm feeling down more. Yeah. yeah. What can you help me with? So what are some of the things I can hope to accomplish sitting oh. in this little couch? Okay. Well, first of all, sometimes people come and they, like, they, they know they have, they know exactly what's happening in their life. They have they're feeling down or anxious. Maybe they had an accident and they have anxiety. But sometimes people, they're not sure what, what's happening and they need to explore, they need to understand what's happening. Sometimes in, with their emotions, why, why are they suddenly falling apart? Uh, why are they so anxious with, with other people? Or, or why do they have those racing thoughts? Uh, so sometimes they need to understand and sometimes they just want to know what should I do? What should I do in, in relationships with my children or with my job or with my emotions, uh, with memories that, that come up? So uh, we, we really, there's no, not, not a single way to go about it. I just think, oh, I'm going to waste Julian's time. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to talk and he's going to say, oh, that's normal. Go home. Mm -hmm. yeah, get a good night's sleep. You'll feel better tomorrow. Yeah. What if that's my fear is what if you know, I know I'm not happy, but I don't know that there's a solution. Yeah. Do, you, do you find that happens very much? That because you talked about not knowing what to do with their emotions. Well, emotions are normal. Yeah. At what exactly. point do I know I need counseling for that? I think like some people they'll seek counseling because there, there's a sudden event that, that happened. There's a crisis. Uh, but some people they they feel sometimes they feel stuck in their life and they they, they want to go beyond that. They want to have more fulfillment in their life. Uh, some people they, they they want to stop drinking, or some people they they, uh, they struggle in in relationships. Uh, so uh, so so there, there's no single way to go about it. But I try to explore, and uh, usually I will reflect what I see, and uh, I'll see sometimes uh, uh, a need to express the emotions. Uh, emotional competence is one big part of healing. To be able to feel the emotions, to be able to express the emotion and to distinguish what's from past events, past trauma and what's an actual need for today. So we try to explore that. And um, one, a major aspect of the counseling is to have that uh, that trust in, in the confidentiality of uh, the process. And all the counselors here are bound by a confidentiality agreement. 
So that that's that's the, like the basis for for counseling, and then we can work with that. So, what are the biggest results you've been getting from people? What do you find that the biggest need is? I, when I was talking earlier to David, he was talking about living in poverty, and yeah. that you've got a definite set of communities you're working with. What are some of the things that you want people to say? There's help here. We really can help you with this. We can help with uh, with like all kinds of, de of uh, mental health uh, problems, whether depression, anxiety, uh, uh, substance use, uh, relationship problems. Uh, um, but I've seen, I, I think I, I would say that I've seen the, the biggest change in people who had uh, like a sudden uh, depression uh, caused by work, family uh, issues, and uh, suddenly they feel stuck. They feel uh, helpless, that they can't change, they can't get out of it. And uh, I've seen some people who after just a couple of sessions, uh, they seem to have a, a breakthrough, just because they, there's that openness, they can talk about it, they can open up and deal with their emotions and get some healing. And keep coming back to hearing you talk about emotions and not talking about that. Is that a big problem that people just kind of pretend those emotions aren't happening or that mm -hmm. that they don't deserve to be aired? Yeah, yeah, that, that that's a big thing. Like we can work on uh, on behavior. For example, if someone wants to stop stop drinking, we could work on maybe well, you we, we can reduce uh, the drinking or stop. You want to stop smoking, and uh, and we have a good program, the Quit Cafe for those who want to stop smoking. Oh, yeah segueing for me here because I was going to say what are other programs that you might sitting here with me say you know what you should be doing is going to some group support here or trying this program exactly so and, 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 and that's part of our work is to refer people to the appropriate resources so uh, we have the, the quick cafe for those who want to stop uh, smoking and we offer nicotine replacement therapy for free because it, it can be expensive but it, it's offered uh, free with the program that, that we have here uh, so all our programs are free in the community. Uh, another program is the um, uh, mental health first aid. Uh, we just started this year giving that course. It's a two-day course, and it helps people uh, to know what to do in helping other people around them with mental health problems, either with mood disorders, anxiety disorders, psychosis, or substance use. Uh, so it's a course that gives like the, the framework and the few steps on how to help people uh, around That's us. Because so sometimes we feel, <laughs> we feel overwhelmed if we have someone uh, either in our family, family or workplace the, uh, who has a problem and we don't know. It's kind of scary. We don't know how to help. But this course gives like some, some basic uh, actions that we can do to help other people. Now, coming in the front door and being able to sit down with you would be amazing. What, mm -hmm. what typically would happen? I would come in the first door, I might go to the reception or over to the information desk. What would be my best first steps if I'm thinking, well, you know, maybe Chicken it could help me with some of my emotions or my upset yeah. nerves or something. What yeah. should I do yeah. first? Yeah. The easiest way is to just come on Tuesdays, because on Tuesdays, like from 11.30 till 5.30, we have the walk-in counseling clinic. So that's for anyone in the community, even if you don't have a doctor here at Chigamek, you can come and it's free. It's accessing counseling for free because it, it could be expensive. But uh, anyone could come. Uh, basically, you just come into the front door and there's someone at the desk and uh, you fill in a form, you meet an intake worker and then you're brought in uh, to one of the counselors for a session. So usually it's about an hour session and um, uh, it's a good way to, to really like bring, bring your issue to, to a counselor. And it's scary at first. For people, it's scary. Uh, how is it going to be? Will I be? Will I feel welcome? Uh, will I be judged? Will I be put down? But really, uh, uh, our approach is to, to be like, like open to, to everybody. It's a non-judgmental approach. Uh, we, we've seen it all, eh? so we and and we all have problems. Everybody has a, a problem, uh, uh, so we're non-judgmental, 
and uh, you can have that that confidence that you can discuss and open up about what's really happening in your life and really what we're doing is a first is a first like uh, contact and then we can refer people to either ongoing counseling with another services or our services or we, we can refer people to programs that, that we have here or elsewhere or to uh, uh, like Catholic Family Services who work with us, so Waypoint, CMHA, uh, when that. So there's a partnership with all those organizations. Okay. I think the w one thing uh, that people don't realize, it's, uh, they, they wonder, well, is my kind of problem the kind of problem that, we, that I could receive help with? And uh, just having that question is a sign that you, you, you should come and, uh, and, and bring, bring the issue. Sometimes people don't understand, they need, they need to, to explore what's happening. Sometimes it's, uh, uh, it could be an eating disorder, it could be uh, an addiction, it could be stress, it could be uh, a relationship problem. Uh, uh, but really, in, in having that first contact, then we can direct and actually, I could say that of all the clients that I've seen, that there's no one that I would say that, uh, sorry, we don't have anything for you. We always have something for all the people who come here. Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome to This Week at the MCC. This weekend marks Girls Holiday Event in downtown Midland, and on Friday, November the 6th and Saturday, November the 7th, the MCC will be hosting the Big Wigs for the fourth consecutive year, presented by Splash Events. Join us and bring, on the, bring the girls on down to the MCC's Rotary Hall for comedy, laughs, and a lot of entertainment. On Sunday, November the 8th, the Tiffin Bay Folk Club presents the 50th anniversary tour of the Irish Rovers, sure to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity here for Midland, so join us for that. And on Tuesday, November the 10th, Fred Hacker will be welcoming his next guest for a day in the life, Imam Dr. Abdul Hai Patel. He has been a leader of the Islamic community in Canada for 43 years. So join us for this enlightening interview and a first-hand account of the Islamic community here in Canada. That's it for this week. Take care and have a great week. I'm here with Dr. Kevin Byron at Chigamic Community Health Centre. I want to find out a little bit about what the role of the physician is for the clients in the Community Health Centre. This is not a walk-in clinic and we don't want to promote that on the show. So how does somebody get access to someone like you? Sure. So we're a community health centre, which means we kind of meet people where they're at and pick up the gaps that other places don't provide. So like a, a, we're not a walk-in center, you're right, we're not the emergency room, but people that are really experiencing barriers, we pick up that population. So possibly seniors who are having trouble accessing health care, newcomers to Canada, we see um, also other groups, so francophones, people who want to be served in French, and as well as our First Nations Métis population as well. Uh, and anyone else who really feels they're having barriers to accessing regular health care at any other, let's call it a doctor's office, they would probably come here. So perhaps when we were just talking to Julian, would it be somebody who might have some emotional barriers as well to understanding their health services sure. and being able to access? That's a big component of what we see. A lot of people with mental health illness uh, problems, anything from depression, anxiety, uh, other serious illnesses, needing counseling. We've got quite a number of services here, uh, as you spoke to with Julian, about uh, being directed at healthcare uh, in the mental health sense. Right. But as opposed yeah. to that diagnostic and treatment, if I do have a mental health condition, I may not be able to access care for my diabetes, for instance. Would that be the kind of scenario that... No, we also do some diabetes care here, too. Mm -hmm. uh, we offer, you know, I, I've once heard it said that 
a community health center, the real difference is that we're not just a doctor's office, like a traditional right. doctor's office. We really are, in the sense of the term community, if, to emphasize that word, we really are a community health center. So we offer quite a number of programs and services that a traditional doctor's office wouldn't have. And that's an example of them. Counseling services, we have a dietitian here. Uh, we have a whole number and range of community services and programs, like we have that kitchen program mm -hmm. uh, that we have going on. We have a creative arts program that we're about to promote. We do some stuff uh, around smoking cessation and counseling when people mm -hmm. really want to come off and down off certain drugs, including just basic cigarettes and nicotine. So that's a, a great example of why I like to work here and what we offer. I quit, quit a lot of addiction. I quit. Now I decided to quit smoking. I, w I knew I was quitting. I just had to find a program. The chicken mass smoker. The, the smoke program. The smoke, quit Smoke Cafe. It's a uh, very motivated. Quit the Cafe. I'm 43. I've smoked since I was probably 12. Well, I, I started coming here about three weeks ago. Throughout my life, uh, since when I began, yeah, a little over 40 years. Yeah, it's been a long time. I've been smoking since I was 12, so I'm 24 now, so that's 12 years, that's a long time. I was referred by my doctor, uh, McSweeney. I uh, just get a little one in there for her, but uh, you know, she pushed and pushed. I didn't go right away. It wasn't something I just jumped right on and said, here I am, I quit, it's not that easy. I like about it is, uh, a little bit of counseling because one time before in my life I quit just on my own but with counseling and the help it's much better much better it, sometimes it becomes a little unruly because more than one person speaks at once but uh, other than that we do a round in we discuss the cycle of the addiction how exciting it feels when you feel you want a cigarette right around to the disappointment after of actually having one it's very informative. It's, uh, it's not strict at all. It's very supportive. The group is really, really good. Even the time factor when I wasn't uh, using the NRT, I was still coming to the group on a weekly basis because the group gave me inner strength. It gave me my own inner strength. Coming to this group once a week, it reinforces that other people are trying to quit. It's not just me. Anybody can come. They don't turn anybody down. I think that's the nicest thing. There's no judgment given to you. I would, I would say to anybody that smokes, try the Quick Cafe and, and use the NRT products because they will help. It is. I look very forward. I, like, I'll put my patch out the night before. Like I put a patch on this morning and I went already and got another one and put it right on the table. So it's there, you know what I mean? All of it together, I think. If you just went in and got the NRT without the counseling and without the support of everyone else in the group, it would be a lot harder, I find. I find being in the group with people that are on the same journey, it's a lot easier. You don't feel as um, alone. I want to be able to actually do stuff with my kids. <laughs> Just playing with the kids and not having to worry about when I can stop and go have a cigarette and yeah, it'll be nice. <laughs> 30 years of smoking and now I'm pretty well smoke free and I'm happy about that and I'm happy that there is programs like this that uh, encourage that you know because eventually I'll get more time in my life and I won't die a miserable death. Obviously I feel a lot better when I'm not smoking. I can taste food better, I can smell better. When I'm not smoking I tend to um, work out a little bit harder. The overall feeling of well-being uh, when I look in the mirror I would say the Quick Cafe is inspiring. The Quick Cafe is like a very positive quit smoking program. The Quick Cafe is a fabulous group. Support. It's all positive direction, right? There's no negativity when you go in there, I find it. I think it's awesome. And beautiful. Quick Cafe is amazing. Just amazing, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> So you also get involved in some preventative health care as well. So yes. I, I saw a press release quite recently about chronic diseases mm -hmm. and the ways to prevent them. Would you have a, any um, in, involvement in teaching as well as? Sure, yeah, that's one reason I, I really like working here. You know, we dedicate the time and the attention to, to people 
uh, in preventive care and right. education. So really when, they, when a client or a patient would see someone here, any of their providers, from a nurse or a nurse practitioner or a doctor, we always try and implement like a health education piece. Right. So that's really weaves through everything that we do, so an educational piece around chronic care. So it does keep coming back to a client, right? right so sure. when you look at who are your clients and how does someone become a client, do you have a limited number of clients you can handle? Are you booked up? That's got to be oh. a question our viewers will have. Yeah, you were kind of asking me earlier, how does one come here or come to be a patient or client here? Really, it's like an enrollment process. So you have to come, uh, give us all of your data, your background information, and it's kind of a rolling admission over time. So uh, every day we have a, actually have an intake coordinator who's a nurse by training and who looks and triages uh, accordingly who needs to be seen right away. And... Um, and who might be able to wait a few weeks to be seen. And on and you know the number of providers that we have here, we all try and see a few new clients a week. Now I'm going to ask you the tough question. You're a doctor. What brought you here? I'm sure the pay isn't as high as somebody in private <laughs> right. practice or a surgeon. What made you say, you know what, the community health center is where I should be? Okay, it's a good question. So uh, I knew I wanted to be a doctor since my mother died. My mother died when I, I was pretty young and she had cancer. So that drew me to cancer. And it also uh, drew me to knowing more about the social side of medicine. And so over time, I became interested in health policy and all of these barriers we talked about becoming uh, accessing a doctor. So I really kind of looked at that angle and I thought, you know, of all the areas I could practice, what do I want to do? And I really wanted to spend more time with patients. I really felt that the social determinants of health were really important, and I really wanted to make sure that each patient got their appropriate allotted time. And here at this clinic, every patient gets at least 30 minutes. Wow. So I was just kind of drawn to that. <laughs> I that, can see why. Know, you know, knowing that we talked earlier about you know, giving patients education, uh, I really liked that piece, and I felt in a lot of other models in healthcare, I couldn't offer that. But here I can. Now, this isn't the only community health center you have worked with or currently work with. Right. I also do a, a one day a week at another one that's located in Wasaga Beach. So community health centers as a concept, there are about 75 of them freestanding throughout the province of Ontario. Right. So we happen to be one in the city of Midland. So when you're accessing a physician here, you make an appointment like a normal doctor, sometime right, yes. between yeah. 8 and 5. That's right. And also some evening hours. Yes, we do evenings twice a week. Yeah. And do you get to follow your patients? I mean, another difference from that walk-in clinic where you go in, you go, hello, stranger, hello, stranger, right. you don't know me. Sure, continuity of care, we call that in medicine, just over time, very important to watch people grow, you know, even from newborns or elderly people or just adults over the lifespan. That's really what family medicine is all about, especially community health center to monitor them and their health problems over time, hopefully come to a solution. But especially with mental health, you know, people struggle with things over a long time and it's nice to see the resolution or the evolution of those problems. So being able to really understand, it sounds like. So they aren't yeah. just understanding, okay, this is what's wrong with my foot. This is right. what's wrong with my foot in relation to the rest of my body and that somebody understands where I'm at. Yeah, and I think it really boils down to time. You're kind of saying, you know, how is this place a little different than what you were getting at? How is it a little different? What are people attracted to mm -hmm. here? I think it's mostly the, the whole idea of time. Here they'll get the time that they want and the services that they need. Whereas another traditional regular doctor's office doesn't offer that or offer it in that order or in that time frame. All right. I think that's as, as painful as we have to be here for okay. this doctor's visit. Thank you for your time today. You're welcome. And this is one of the other faces that you're going to see at Chigamic. Well, welcome to downtown Midland. My name is Jeff Graham from Chigamit Community Health Center. And today we're in uh, downtown Midland and we're celebrating Community Health and Wellbeing Week. And for today, for this morning, we, uh, we're out on the in the community giving out community health and wellbeing bags. So they're bags with some small stock in there, some water bottles, some toques, some ch chapstick, lip chap, that type of thing. And really it's about us being out in the community, meeting the community where they are. So we're out with our nurse practitioner and one of our dietitians. We're meeting people where they are, mingling, hearing their stories, and just creating a sense of belonging. 
Um, we, we really know that a sense of belonging and sense of community equals good health, so that's what we're out here doing today. Uh, being in the community often as a community health worker, we, we know that there are a lot of people who are, who are uh, using the downtown core for many of their services. So we like to go to where people are. Um, there's a lot of barriers for clients and community members to reach us up in Chigamix, so it's important for us to be out in the community. It also creates a sense of us belonging to the community and the community being connected with us. Our community health centres are designed by the community for the community. So what a better way to meet uh, folks from the community than to be out there with them. So we've done this type of work uh, and this type of day every day for the last five years since Chigamit Community Health Centre has been open. Uh, <clears throat> most of the time uh, we are in a downtown core. Last year we were in multiple sites, so we were in Victoria Harbour, we were in Penetang, we were in Port McNichol, and we were in Midland. Um, just doing something a little different every year to find uh, community members where they are and to meet with them in those places. Well, people are very appreciative, they're curious what's the bag all about and how much does it cost and why would you give anybody anything free today, it's very expensive to buy things. So we just uh, encourage them and let them know that the bags are a donation, they are free, there are some useful things in there for them or their family and uh, we just uh, want to use that as a, as a way to get to greet people. It's, it's fortunate that, that we can come out in the community um, and it's really a key for us is to meet with community members where they are and to hear their voice. A lot of our community members never have a voice so it's a very good connecting point and uh, we're very proud to do this type of thing every year. Look out for next year. Welcome back to Community Contact with Cher Cunningham. I'm sitting now in the office of Jessica North, who's the program coordinator here at Chigamick. Now, when I say that, that's a little misleading because there's so much going on under this roof and in this office. Welcome, Jessica. Tell us what you really do in a day here at Chigamick. Thanks, Cher. Well, I do a few different things. I am the program coordinator for Chigamick Me Health Center, which means I design, develop, and evaluate um, all of our internal programs that are open to the community. I also am the project manager for the Healthy Kids Community Challenge, which is a community-led project that aims at developing, designing and developing programs um, that are geared towards the Aboriginal community um, for children between the age of 0 and 12. So when you're saying a Healthy Kids program, tell me a little bit more about what it means to you for those kids to be healthy. Is it just an illness thing? Is it a, about hygiene? What is involved in that? There's a few different things that are involved in that. It really is about developing some prevention skills at an early age to really get children starting off on the right foot. Um, so most of the programs are specific to increasing children's physical activity, giving them skills to learn how to cook and actually um, know and learn about different food nutrition. Now, tell me a little bit of the history of this. How long has this program been around and what are the, what's the impact? It was, it's actually a very new project that was announced from the ministry a couple months ago. 42 um, different organizations and communities were invited to participate in this challenge. Chigamic is actually one of the six Aboriginal organizations. So tell me, what is the impact that you hope to have with this program? Well, really we're trying to increase the health and well-being of our Aboriginal community. In doing that, we are focusing in on Aboriginal children to really give them the skills and knowledge to live a long, healthy life. When you look at the rights of the child and how we're supposed to be integrating that into Canada with our UN agreement, that really plays into that field, doesn't it? Giving those children some of those rights and responsibilities themselves about taking care of their own health. Yeah, we are giving them the power to um, tell us what they want in healthy programming, which is something that's pretty unique. We are going to be going out and asking the children and their parents um, what do they want to see happen in the programming. Um, and I think that by doing that, we're going to be engaging more community members. That seems to niche in very well with your whole belief here at Chigamick that you can take responsibility for your own health and well-being. Now, you mentioned right off the top that some of these programs are open to the public. And a lot of the program we've been talking about, if you are a client and if you are rostered, whereas you're talking about public programs, so that means anybody can come and take part. Yeah, it's actually a common myth in the community that only our programming is open to rostered Chigamit clients. It's actually open to anybody in the North Simcoe community completely for free. So all of our programs are completely accessible to community members. 
Now, when I was at the powwow, I actually picked up some of these great little flyers. And you have things like breastfeeding clinic, um, kitchen talk, health, healing through creating, breaking free from depression. These are just a small selection of some of the programs. How many programs would you say? Do you have any idea? I think we right now have about 12 ongoing programs, but we do periodically offer different workshops and some time limited programs, which means they don't occur all the time. Now, some of them do run for a specific length of time as well. I'm going to get you to go in depth on just a few of the programs. First of all, the Breastfeeding Clinic. The Breastfeeding Clinic is absolutely wonderful. It's actually the only clinic that's open to the community in the North Simcoe region completely for free. So it occurs every single Wednesday from 10 till 2. And anybody who is either... Um, currently pregnant or has just had a new baby are welcome to come. They get an opportunity to meet with a lactation consultant as well as a nurse to go through any of the common challenges women have when they're just going to become a brand new mom. And I remember that. It was a challenge for me. And if I hadn't had a fabulous nurse in the hospital, I don't know whether I would have bothered breastfeeding. It That's sounds absolutely. terrible, but it was, it's scary and it's painful and it's hard and there's nobody out there. And now there is, which is beautiful. Okay, the Quit Cafe, we saw some clips, some testimonials of that. And again, a free program? It is completely free. Um, the Quit Cafe is the only smoking cessation program actually in, in um, North Simcoe that offers free nicotine replacement therapy ongoing to community members who are trying to quit smoking. It occurs once a week, every single Thursday. It is a drop-in. Um, participants get access to free counseling um, with specific to their smoking issues, as well as peer support and free nicotine replacement therapy at each visit. That sounds fantastic. What other programs are you finding are really in demand here? So if you look at this range of 12 programs, mm -hmm. they run several times through the year as well, right? Some yes. of them are ongoing and some of them are six to eight weeks. Which are the ones that you're finding really popular? Um, I would say definitely our Breaking Free from Depression and our Healing Through Creating programs. Um, so our Breaking Free from Depression utilizes cognitive behavioral therapy to help individuals overcome their struggles with depression. And I'm going to make you explain that term because it sounds awfully scientific mumbo jumbo. Well, it helps us learn new strategies to evaluate the way we're thinking about things and integrating it with behavioral changes like going getting out and exercising things that we sometimes don't do when we're feeling depressed so it takes it takes and combines them together to help people um, start to overcome some of their challenges now one of the things i've noticed <clears throat> in the studies is that medical doctors are saying antidepressants are not the solution mm -hmm. they are the crutch to get to the solution so this sounds like it could be part of that full picture. Studies actually show that by combining medication along with CBT, individuals actually improve, improve at a faster rate. So this isn't just smile, pull up your socks. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy looks at things like saying, I hate myself, this is so stupid, I always do this wrong. And you can actually get that pattern in your brain. And you don't even know what's happening, right? And that's, that's part of what you're finding and breaking that pattern. It is. It's about uncovering some of those unhelpful thought patterns that we have had established um, that are often rooted at an early age um, and starting to break them down and think about new ways to view ourselves and the world. Now, the other one you mentioned was this healing through creating. That sounds like a lot of fun, too. That would be a great positive thing to add. Tell me what goes on at this. Tell me, so give me an idea of what this program is. Is it ongoing? No, it is time limited. So each round of Healing Through Creating is about six sessions long. Um, and it's where individuals will work with different types of art media, whether it's paint, sculpture, um, knitting, all sorts of different art forms with a counselor to help um, resolve a lot of internal stress issues. So it's about... Um, First, it's about self-discovery, understanding where some of our biggest challenges are coming from, and then utilizing different art forms to be able to express ourselves and understand our challenges and work through them. Now, one of the things that I see is you, you have a lot of different programs. How do you decide on what direction you should go in or which programs really should fly here in our local communities? Well, we listen to the community. So all of our staff here are constantly asking community members, what do they see missing at Chigamic? What would they like to see more of at Chigamic? So we do a lot of needs assessments that way by having conversations with community members. We also uh, disseminate surveys throughout the year to get a little feel for what else could we be offering the community to help them feel good and increase their sense of belonging. 
Now, when we talk about belonging, we actually had this little discussion before we came on camera, is that you want people to feel like they're part of the Chigamic community, but you also want Chigamic to be part of the bigger community, and you're actually just launching a new program. Tell us a little bit about that membership program. Membership involves anyone in the community coming to Chigamic, filling out an application, and becoming more involved in what occurs at Chigamic. Um, by becoming a member of Chigamic, you are having an active role in how our community centre operates. There's also some perks of becoming a member at Chigamic. These include having a voting right at our annual general meeting, as well as attending special, um, special events targeted specifically to membership. You'll also get a membership annual newsletter, which will keep you up to date on everything that's occurring in Chigamic. We're also going to be sending specific surveys to membership to ask what your needs are and what you want to have occurring at Chigamic. So to become a member is actually quite easy. You, you can go online at www.chigamic.ca and fill out the online survey, or you can actually come into Chigamic and fill out a form. Um, once you become a member, you will be getting a membership card that um, will then identify you as being an active member here at Chigamic. So is there a volunteering, a fundraising? What are some of the components of why do you need these members? Chigamic as a community health centre is here really um, for the community. Um, so it's up to the community to, to tell us how Chigamic should operate um, and what kind of services and programs we should be offering them. So we're able to un get that information through membership. So would you say that's one of the biggest needs is making people, encouraging people to feel involved and feel like Chigamic is their resource? Yes, absolutely, and I think we can do that through membership by bringing people into Chigamic, but also by bringing us out into the community and interacting with different individuals and members. So there's not a huge responsibility to be a member. It's, it's more of a privilege. It is. It is a privilege, um, and your responsibility can be as small or as large as you'd like it to be. Um, by being a member, you can also sign up for a lot of volunteer opportunities here at Chigamic, or you can simply just fill out a few surveys. So more information on that, go to chigamic.ca to find out how to become one of those members of Chigamic and have your say and input in this wonderful community organization. Now, that's a great way to find out how to help, but one thing we didn't cover when we talked about programs, and we're almost out of time, so I want to touch on this, is there are so many programs that I can find out about them on the website, but how do I access, get access to them? How do I sign up? Mm -hmm. Well, by going on our website or coming into Chigamic and talking with our staff or viewing our RAC card display, you will be given a contact person's name. They're often the individuals who are facilitating the program. Um, so simply all you have to do is give them a call and let them know you'd like to sign up, um, and that's pretty much it. Now, I see that your name is on a lot of these programs. How busy do you get? What does your day look like when you're, you're sitting here in your office? Yeah, the days are busy, um, but it's always such a pleasure to, you know, have those conversations with clients. And, and, and it's always a great opportunity for when clients do call in to register for different programs to be able to share with them other opportunities that are going on at the center that they can take part in. Now, as a social worker yourself, you're not just sitting here doing admin structures. You're, you're actually getting in and facilitating some of these programs. Yeah, yourself. I actually do facilitate some of the most of the programs. As so well. the friendly face behind what programs? Um, the Quick Cafe, um, as well as our Healing Through Creating program um, and our Breaking Free from in in Depression. It sounds like this is a little bit different kind of place to work than perhaps a hospital or you know a doctor's office. It, it seems like there's almost a, a different attitude about health here. What is your experience working here compared to previous jobs? Oh, this place is absolutely phenomenal. Working within an interdisciplinary team really takes healing to a whole new level. It's also really great working at Chigamic because we value a holistic approach to health and well-being. So we combine our, the medical model with other alternative models. Um, so being able to work within that um, holistic realm really helps uh, us be able to serve any client um, that comes through our door. So there's a place for you here at Chigamic. Thank you for watching our program today and thank you Jessica for helping share these programs that are available to the public. You have been watching Community Contact with Cher Cunningham only on Rogers TV.